and welcome to TechFunnel.com's interview series. My name is Danny White, and today we have the opportunity to talk to Barry Flack. Barry is an enlightened, disruptive, and award-winning UK-based people professional who has operated at a senior level in a variety of global organizations and who now consults with businesses of all sizes on integrating new ways of working and technology adoption. Barry also advises various emerging HR tech startups and speaks and writes across the HR and business circuit globally. He was named one of the top 100 HR influencers in 2018 by Engagedly and recognized with the top HR tech influencers in 2018 award. Welcome, Barry. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Danny, and uh, thanks for inviting me along. Awesome. So tell us just a little bit about yourself and your work in the human resources industry. Sure, thank you. So, um, while based uh, here just outside London, mm -hmm. uh, your listeners will have to get used to the fact that uh, my accent is Irish. <laughs> um, I came over here several decades ago uh, to make it my home. Mm -hmm. um, but look, in answering your question, um, look, I was uh, a traditional corporate global HR professional. Mm -hmm. um, worked in lots of global organizations. And then, like a lot of people, I guess, several years ago, took a bit of a turn in being attracted by the freelance portfolio world mm -hmm. um, because I wanted to do work day in, day out. But frankly, I enjoy doing all of it rather than parts of it. Um, and that took me into, as you've described in your introduction, um, working with organizations, primarily in the small, medium, with some larger enterprises uh, mm -hmm. on the multitude of problems that they currently grapple with. Um, and I balance that with something that's always been a very rich vein, which is promoting HR technology um, and trying to increase its level of adoption and usage uh, across the HR space. And like, um, as you said, also elsewhere, um, I make my point and give my opinion and present and agitate and hopefully <laughs> do something differently uh, about how we do what we do. Awesome. So... You get the opportunity to work with a lot of CEOs and executives um, in various companies. What are some of the biggest challenges that you see at some of the most senior levels when it comes to talent acquisition? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I had the pleasure of um, talent acquisition as a specialism down the years, so mm -hmm. drawing from lots of experience. Um, I think we still suffer from the leadership of organizations being overwhelmed and overburdened. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that drives, I think, a perception that what we do in talent acquisition is probably a hell of a lot easier um, than in their minds than it actually is. Um, it is a tough market for us to operate within. Um, it's, you know, uh, a difficult role to fill in creating the right talent for the organization. So I think when they arrive at discussing it, I think that's certainly a bit of an issue. I think the major almost humility piece around some of the senior end is mm -hmm. uh, the fact that if there was ever that, and I don't like the phrase war for talent, um, mm -hmm. the candidates, the individual, the talent out there want it, mm -hmm. um, and that there is now an onus on leaders in enterprises of all sides to recognize that if they want some of the best people, what they've got to do is they've got to go after changing their organization making it attractive and creating a scenario to bring those people in. Mm -hmm. um, and none of that's easy. And none of that's easy to hear when you're at the senior end of the organization. Right. Right. Absolutely. So um, in what ways have you seen the human resources tech space just evolve and change over the last couple of years? Yeah. So we've gone from my early days, which I would sort of take around, you know, the start of the century, the, the, the noughties. Um, mm -hmm. when, like, frankly, we were obsessed with product that was very much about helping us. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, um, without being too dismissive, you know, a record collating uh, part of the organization. We wanted to do that better. We wanted to mm -hmm. manage that at scale. Um, I think clearly we've grown up um, as a function over the last few years. Right. The last vestiges of companies who believe they are not up for being disrupted by others who've arrived is gone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have clearly got to a point where we are much more fussy, uh, much more nuanced around the products that we want to have inside our organizations. 
And so I've seen a level of maturity around that that says the, the, the table stakes of recording people's data have long gone. Mm-hmm. What I want now is to truly understand how to harvest that. Uh, what I truly want to do now in a world that we call digital uh, is really understand how I bring alive each part of my employment proposition through the world of digital mm-hmm. automation and experience. Um, and I think we're in a different problem now, which is that we're pretty overwhelmed with product um, at CHR professionals. Um, the product set is far too point solution oriented, so it doesn't make it easy at the enterprise level. Um, but I think that'll improve. But I think we're having better conversations around tech and around HR than mm-hmm. we had previously, and that's that's a joy to behold. Awesome. Do you think that the um, the increase in just having a focus on digital has aided in that maturity within the tech the HR tech space? Yeah, it has. So, you know, some of the areas I uh, get myself involved in, um, you know, venture capital space, uh, people who have no legacy, you know, workplace in its broadest term, um, uh, you know, is, is it creating a lot of noise, a lot of very positive noise uh, about its impact, about it being a really important asset class uh, mm-hmm. for investment, for focus. Um, so I think we've got a real sense now that our table stakes, as I defined it earlier, are not very much about a digital infrastructure, an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and I think what we have been thankful for is, you know, an absolute avalanche of incredibly talented people who have entered into our domain from typically from other functions, brought with them some of that thought process, uh, some of those bits of technology. Um, and I think we're better off for it. You know, I think we're now looking at organizational problems through the lens of maybe a marketing lens, a data mm-hmm. science lens, other things that, frankly, 10 years ago, you know, we, we wouldn't even know what it meant rather than thinking that's how we could solve some of our problems. Very cool. Switching gears just a little bit, there's a universal conversation and discussion going on about how companies must um, reorganize or restructure the way that they reach out to baby boomers as opposed to reaching out to millennials. And then we have the, the, uh, the Gen Zers and, you know, all the other generations that come into the workforce. What is some of the advice you would give to HR directors who are aiming to be successful at both managing and retaining baby boomers and millennials in the workforce in the, within the same company, the same industry? Yeah, look, let's, um, let me say, I think at the first instance, I'm not a great fan of the generational distinction. Mm-hmm. I think we're craving, um, answers and simplicity to what is, mm-hmm. frankly, an incredibly complex thing. People are complex. Right. I think we've overestimated how complex the people scenario has been. Mm-hmm. And I think we should embrace that. But I think, look, in, in answering the question, I think it's very much about taking the better side of that analogy and really understanding the people out there who are attracted to your organization. Mm-hmm. I think there is a recognition that in, before you're even attracting them, you've got to have, I think, in place a pretty modern look about how you want to organize your business and what that means for balancing some of those categories of individual that you talk to. Right. So what do we do around thinking or rethinking those at the latter stage of their career where, mm-hmm. frankly, you know, we've had a very preset view that suggests they leave and that's the end of that. Mm-hmm. Now, what is the value in terms of your organization and how ultimately, and, and you know, the answer to any of these categories is very much about how do you get the very best of the people inside your business? What is it that defines what makes them excited and interested? Um, and I think those problems are as much about how we organize and how we attract different types of people for diversity, mm-hmm. but also about how we embrace what we do as humans to interact and solve problems and increasingly what we give across to technology and the machine. And, you know, we layer over and over the complexity of some of those at the latter end of their career mm-hmm. and their comfort levels with some of the digital platforms and solutions that we have. So I'd, I'd love to tackle that one in one long 
uh, <laughs> webinar because it's complex. Yeah. Um, try not, uh, if you're listening in, folks, to just get too hung up on the defined categories, but start embracing a real true sense that you've got more levers for success mm-hmm. involving those people than you probably historically looked at. Absolutely. Maybe we can come back one day and do that uh, long it. webinar on that topic. Um, what are some of the tips you would give to HR managers and directors um, who want to gr- really grow and retain their workforce, especially in an increasingly digital focused world? Um, some people say the answer is with training. Some people say the answer, you know, is with just having a more diverse senior management. Uh, what do you think are some tips that managers can take for doing that? It's a great question. I mean, I'm seeing this issue more and more. Um, and what steer I would give to people is we need to talk about this. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. We've got a fairly blunt instrument historically about how we do this. It tends to be imposed. Mm-hmm. It tends to create what I call intelligent responses to intelligent um, And what I mean by that, I don't believe in the issue of change resistance. I believe. Mm-hmm. Smart people look at these things and go, what does it mean to me? Right. Uh, I don't know how to do that. I don't know what it means. Or, frankly, I have a status that is reflected in my organization by this. This thing called digital puts it under threat. So I think there's a, a real sense of this is a big, massive problem statement. I think we have, di- we have digital literacy problems at one end. To some of our industries and our society, of which unfortunately the workplace gets stuck with solving some of these problems, um, doesn't have at its broad level enough digital literacy. And so I think part of what we've got to do is talk about what it means. Mm-hmm. What does it mean on the roadmap for us as an organization in relation to our adoption? Uh, what is it we're about to give up? Uh, we're seeing some major strides, of course, in hospitality, service, retail, manufacturing. So what does it mean to people? Is it a very strong sense that we are liberating them to do more humane things and free them up to connect with people? Mm-hmm. Or frankly, are we being honest and suggesting that it's a great way for us to cut down on the number of people that we hire uh, because capital expenditure on these machines is a bit cheaper? Mm-hmm. You know, We've got to be honest. Uh, these are intelligent people. But you've touched a real sense that one of the things that we need to do is demystify digital. Right. You know, tap into a mountain of not terribly well publicized, but we should be more, you know, MOOCs and other great resources that might be free, that might be agencies at a local level, and start getting our people involved in being aware of what digital can do. You know, nudge them, help them, you know, develop get them into the mood that this is not something they need to fear, it's something mm-hmm. they need to learn. Um, and I think we'll, you know, I think we'll experience massive advances around that, but it's a nuanced problem. Talk about it in your organization. Absolutely. Don't impose. Absolutely, absolutely. So moving on to the future of human resources, mm. what are some of the key roles that you see coming up in the next five years? I know we have this entire world of artificial intelligence and you know robotics within human resources and the fear of robots taking over people's jobs. But what are some of the actual key roles that will be important? Yeah, um, and I've seen and read all those, you know, wonderful headlines. And um, <laughs> I've got a very strong sense. It's a wonderful time to be involved in organization, people, HR. Absolutely. I think our artificial intelligence debate is at a very immature level in, in its capability. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. I think we're dealing with data that we need to train uh, and get used to. If you can ask me the question, you know, inside that opportunity that uh, is in front of us, uh, I've seen a couple of organizations locally who've got this wonderful balance between incredibly data rich driven decision making and a very strong sense of value. So mm-hmm. just because we can measure lots of things at the moment, do we want to measure them? Do we want to take action on it? So I'm seeing some organizations that are very much putting HR people at the, the machine has said X, but before we go do this, you know, we need people who are historically good HR practitioners 
right. making sure we make good human decisions, that it's mm-hmm. not binary. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've got wonderful developments in technology, but we still need to really understand, you know, what are the implications of, you know, wearables and mm-hmm. you know, sensors and things that give very binary answers that frankly can't comprehend the complete and utter nuance of an individual and what those things mean. So I think all of that stuff excites me. Uh, mm-hmm. If you give me a bit of license and it's another one, I'd love to take it another time because I think mm-hmm. there's loads of great opportunity. Absolutely. Well, I, I think there is a lot in there around design. So I think we've cluttered organizations historically. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen some new, bright, young things emerge and fall into the same trap. But actually, this whole thing around employee design and mm-hmm. how we create something for our organizations, you know, is a very different skill set. You know, it brings through some of these theories about how we map out what it feels to work around here. What it does to challenge, you know, some of the stuff that just doesn't work anymore, but we're taking it as a ritual. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that's a constant level of reiteration based on feedback, sentiment, you know, data analysis and a real understanding of those moments that people enjoy it in the workplace. I think that's our space. And look, my last one, which I think will come pretty soon mm-hmm. is, you know, somewhere around this workforce planning area. Uh, we've got a world of organizations being designed between freelancers and what we used to know as permanent FTE. Mm-hmm. Um, we are now able for the first time in 150 years to measure tasks. Right. That's why we created the social contract. So I think platforms and marketplaces and micro working and part time and flexibility and remote and in the office and not mm-hmm. is on the one hand overwhelming and complex. On the other, a real opportunity for HR professionals to understand how to define work, assemble it, create the work packages, and then disassemble it, mm. you know, on behalf of the business. And that, that excites me. I think we're very close to that. And I see some organizations, you know, doing that. So I think wonderful opportunity ahead of us, Danny. Very interesting. Very interesting. So if there's one thing that you could change about the human resources industry as it is, what would it be? Yeah, I, I, I've touched on this probably and hinted to, to listeners a couple of times. Um, like our, our, our heritage is we lack self-confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are an organization that has a history of compliance, making sure that we don't uh, upset our regulator or lawmakers, mm-hmm. collecting data. But actually, you know, no different to our fellow man and woman. You know, we want to solve problems. Right. Uh, we want to solve, you know, higher levels of problems. So, I've touched upon it. That opportunity is opening up for us. Mm-hmm. The machine will take a lot of that historical legacy stuff. But what I would ask of my HR professionals is let's question some of our addiction to those rituals that don't work. So some of the go-to places that we have safely gone for the last 100 years around performance management, mm-hmm. some parts of our recruitment, you know, some ways that we are managing a very much a command and control Mm-hmm. I think we need to step back and ask ourselves, you know, if the real work is being done around groups and teams and networks and relationships, then we've got to rethink the way we impact the organization. And that's exciting, but it's scary. And it does mean that some of those things that we have taught at business school, that mm-hmm. our leaders enjoy, that has an allure of control, we mm-hmm. have to step into the boardroom and say, it doesn't work. We yeah. need to do something different. And that's great. But I'd love to see us being a bit braver about that. Donna. Absolutely. Very, very interesting conversation. Um, if, where can people find out more about your work online? Yeah, look, I am uh, available on all the usual platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a website, which is barryflack.co.uk. Mm-hmm. And Twitter, Barry J. Flack. Um, look, I am always looking professionally to link with all kinds of people mm-hmm. uh, on good old LinkedIn. So catch me at all those. I'm pretty responsive. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing from anybody who wants to take the conversation further. Awesome. Thank you so much, Barry, for sharing your thoughts with us. We really appreciate it. Um, look forward to some of those roles and those um, uh, insights that you've given us coming to fruition over the next couple of years. Thanks for having me, Donna. 
Thank you so much. Thank you guys for listening to this interview. For these and other interviews and topics, please visit techfunnel.com. You can connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our weekly newsletter so you can stay up to date on everything that's happening in the industry. Thank you.